Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Geek Bites Podcast. I am Ramon Mejia here. here. It's episode number 149 of the show, getting really close to 158. Uh, so thanks for hanging out with us so much. Every single week on the podcast, I bring you the round of week specs, geek, and tech news. Discuss that news, of course, anything else happening to be interest, interested in that week. Uh, Edgar Costa is off for the, the week, so he won't be joining me. Uh, so it'll be a more uh, abbreviated version of the show. Uh, but this week, we have some great news, including geek news, including Tide Pod Laws. Um, Tesla in space, the new Joker, a bunch of movie casting stuff, um, some really great movie trailers uh, for the movie trailer showdown, and of course, so much more. Um, but of course, we begin the show though with Geek News. Uh, now, in Geek News, uh, we're going to begin the show though with uh, some interesting stuff from the Winter Olympics. Uh, the Winter Olympics opened this past couple of days ago, I think this last weekend, um, there was an amazing display from over 1,200 drones that broke a new world record, uh, forming 3D images over the opening at the Pyeongchang um, Olympic Winter Olympic Games in South Korea. Just going to show you a quick video of it. We'll, we'll block out the music because we don't know the rest of that. But some really great info, um, use of aerial drones in a organized fashion. It was presented by Intel. Um, they use a, a new um, bit of technology to organize everything to, into actual shapes, keeping them in in, in, in solidified portions. Um, the footage from these Olympic Games is absolutely amazing that this is actually possible, uh, creating these huge sky encompassing uh, 3D images using drones. Um, pretty cool. So there you go, just sharing that out. Uh, also in some geek news. <laughs> this is definitely a silly one of the sillier uh, stories I've read this past week. Now, last week we told you about the Tide Pod challenge. Um, uh, it, it's a stupid thing where people are eating Tide Pod uh, laundry detergent um, pods, uh, and they're getting very sick because it's poisonous to people. It's laundry detergent. You're not supposed to eat that. Um, so much so that you like YouTube and other like video sharing sites are actually proactively um, searching these Tide Pod Challenge videos out and taking them down so that people who do it don't get internet famous, um, which is kind of the goal of this entire thing. Um, some um, lawmakers in New York have wanted to take it a step further. Uh, Assemblywoman uh, Aravelia Simontas and uh, Senator Bran Holliman um, their solution to this particular issue is to make Tide Pod um, pods less appetizing, I guess. Uh, their solution is to impose clear warning labels on all packaging, including each pod. Uh, quote, unquote, this is where the statement is. We're asking for all laundry detergent pods to be uniform in color, says Hollyman. He added, they're so alluring. They smell sweet and they look like gummy bears. They might as well say, bite me on them, which is absolutely not the case to anybody who's ever actually done laundry. Um, these things smell like soap. And while they are brightly colored, um, they're very clearly labeled on the packaging, not for consumption, uh, poisonous. The The containers are all child approved so that kids don't do it. Um, and, and it's not kids who are actually doing this. It's adults and teens who know better. They actually know what they're doing. And that's part of their thing for getting, trying to get internet famous by doing a stupid thing. Um, so this is just a weird, weird solution to a problem that really kind of only exists because people want to do stupid things to try to get internet famous. But there you go. Um, in other geek news, um, SpaceX's Tuesday has lost its biggest ro rocket ever. Its payload, uh, a test rocket carrying Elon Musk, Tesla Roadster, and a dummy named Starman wearing one of SpaceX spacesuits. Um, this was just kind of a fun thing. Uh, there's a documentary video showing Elon Musk actually watching it live and running outside to watch the launch and and seeing and you know watching the the um, return footage from this particular um, SpaceX mission launch. Um, the idea was to launch this vehicle into space as a promotional thing um, to prove that it would work and that the rockets were returning and all that happened. The only snag, of course, was that um, this. Um, car was supposed to be aimed at Mars and it missed its trajectory. And that's very easy to do. There's a lot of math involved in getting things to go where they're supposed to go when they're supposed to be there. Um, more complicated things than I can probably explain. Um, and instead of hitting Mars, it's going to hit, unfortunately hit um, the asteroid belt between Ju Mars and Jupiter. Uh, so it did miss its 
its its aim, I guess. Uh, but well, thankfully, the, the the vehicle sent back some great images and some video footage of its journey until you know they lost contact with it. Uh, and so on the screen currently, if you're watching the video version of the podcast, there's a great last picture of the roadster just going off into space with Earth in the background. Uh, and it's it's kind of beautiful. And the fact that it's private space industry that's pushing the envelope for space travel instead of, you know, NASA or some government funded agency. Uh, so there you go. So, but it's a fun, very interesting event for the space community. Okay, uh, moving on to some entertainment news. Um, Warner Brothers released a description for the Shazam plot, um, which focuses on the lighthearted aspects of the story of young Billy Batson, uh, played by Asher Angel. And his ability to transform into the superpowered adult, played by Zachary Levy, Shazam, uh, also known as Captain Marvel. Um, GameSpot got a synopsis, apparently, um, suggesting them that the movie will take a big approach, which is the movie with Tom Hanks, allowing Sham Shazam to act like a kid, even when he's in an adult body. This synopsis reads, um, we all have superheroes inside of us. It's just takes a bit of magic to bring it out. In Billy Batson's case, by the shouting the witcher's am, this streetwise 14-year-old foster kid can turn into the adult superhero Zam, courtesy of an eight, uh, ancient wizard. And a lot of the description talks about Shazam setting out to test the limits of his abilities with the joyful recklessness of a child. But he'll need to master these powers quickly in order to fight the deadly forces of evil controlled by Dr. Thaddeus Savannah. So there you go. So that's your Shazam synopsis. Uh, seems like it's going to be a combination of the movie Big, um, I don't know, with some superhero movie. There you go. Uh, if that gets you excited, great. Um, and you know, there are going to be other Shazam kids in this movie, so maybe it'll be like a, a buddy pick. I don't know. But still, um, it's cool, I guess. Okay, uh, in other entertainment news, um, Joaquin Phoenix is in Hawks to play the Joker in the new Joker origin film. Um People are kind of excited about this because Joaquin Phoenix was originally tapped to play the Joker in other um, Batman properties. He turned down the offers at that point, and but he apparently he is committed. He, he said yes to the role in this particular instance. So we may be seeing um, Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker in the near future for that new Joker origin movie, which to me is much better than that last Joker from Suicide Squad. Okay. Uh, also, um, you're going to get some Star Wars TV. That's great. I mean, Game of Thrones directors David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, uh, um, writers and producers of, of, of Game of Thrones, have been um, tapped to write Star Wars television. Uh, and this totally makes sense if you think about the context of Disney trying to create um, more original content for their, um, not just their cable channels, but also for their new streaming services. Um, and, and, Disney, and the Star Wars property is very ripe for all that stuff. I mean, um, they said that their story is going to be separate from the trilogy, from the movies, and even from the new upcoming trilogy from uh, Ryan Johnson. Uh, so it's going to be this entirely new thing. Um, I'm hoping it's not the Clone Wars, personally. Sorry. I'm hoping it's something fun and interesting. But again, this this is that's all the news we kind of know about this particular product. But hey, I'm always happy to see more Star Wars stuff. Uh, also, news, there's going to be a Conan TV show. That's right, Conan. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Conan the Barbarian, Conan the Destroyer. I get that one. Um, beloved film for um, action geeks, I guess, in the 80s. Uh, there have been attempts to like reboot this franchise. Hasn't worked out well, particularly well, if you've ever seen those in Conan movies. Um, even the Conan video game franchise. Not that amazing. Um, Amazon, however, is developing a, a new drama series for Conan based on the Robert E. Howard books. Uh, the product is in the hands of other Camera Thrones and other people, um, including director Miguel Sapajic, Fargo, and the Hadman's Tale executive producer Warren Ludville, Pathfinder Media, and Endeavor content. So a bunch of people who've had success are taking this tab and making a new Conan um, television show series for Amazon. So Amazon is more than happy to still pay for original content. So um, hopefully this won't suck. Uh, cross our fingers. Okay. Uh, also, uh, um, the United States is not alone in rebooting their franchises. Uh, Japan is going to do it with Ultraman. That's right, Ultraman. If you've ever seen the um, older, like, 80s, 90s television show, it was about a guy who would have a suit and this power core, and he would activate it, and he would grow giant-sized to fight evil kaiju monsters looking to destroy the city. And it's very campy. It's very much on the lines of, like, Power Rangers kind of stuff. Um, in this particular reboot, though, it's going to be the son of Ultraman, and he's going to be normal sized 
um, to fight crime and evil things on Earth. Uh, so that's going to be a twist in making it more original. Um, still very Power Rangery to me, uh, but hey, um, it can't be worse than the original. I, mean, I, I like the original, but you know how these things go. They they try to fix it or change it, and you lose the original love of what people enjoyed about it, um, or they make it super dark or whatever. Uh, so I'm, I'm intensively hopeful that this is going to be cool, but again, that's all really, really knows that they're going to be doing it. Okay, um, another reboot. Chucky, uh, that's right, Child's Play, is going to be made into a television series, or at least it's being worked on as for, for a screen treatment. Uh, the original director, uh, the original, I should say, writer of all the movies and the last director of the last three movies, uh, Don Mancini, uh, an interview with uh, Bloody Disgusting, um, talked about his plans to make this into a television show. He says, we plan to use Child's Play in the title. We want to definitely signal that we're going dark. Darker than ever before, it's going to be very creepy. Uh, uh, <laughs> so the movie's not creepy enough, so you got to make it into a creepy, creepy television show. There you go. Um, another franchise that's being trying to develop for a screen treatment. It's not the first time that these movies have, have uh, horror films have been trying to get the treatment. They just never worked out before. Like Nightmare on Elm Street tried to do it. Um, I believe um, Friday the 13th did as well. Just didn't really work out because... How often can you see the same people being murdered or like the same criminal not getting caught or the same entity? Um, I don't have much hope for it. I'm not also a big fan of this particular franchise, but other people are. Um, so, yay, I guess. Okay, that's it for the entertainment news and getting geek news. Um, we're going to move into the movie trailer showdown where we show the best trailers that are coming out this week now because of um, Super Bowl. Uh, there actually have been quite a few new trailers and TV spots and, and commercials galore that came out this last week, um, starting from last Sunday, um, including Mission Impossible, Lost World 2, Westworld Season 2, Infinity Wars, TV spots. But I've been, I've excluded those intentionally because they're rather boring, uh, to me at least, or I, they were things that weren't showing me anything new. For example, love Lost World 2. Plan to watch the movie theater. But the information they showed with this last TV spot... Um, they added a scene with like a kid and a dinosaur in the bedroom. That was kind of it. Everything else was already seen. Um, Westworld, again, big fan. Nothing really new there. They don't say anything about it. Uh, they just show people and robots fighting. Infinity Wars TV spot, same thing. Mission Impossible 1 was just not entertaining. Uh, so the, the trailers that I have listed here are the ones that I thought were entertaining, original, and things I haven't seen before. At least, you know, trailers I haven't seen previously. Um, I Feel Pretty is the first one up. We'll take a look at that together. Uh, this is the one that stars, um, golly gee, what's her name? Uh, Amy Schumer. Uh, it's a m about a ordinary woman who struggles with feelings of insecurity and inadequacy on a daily basis, then wakes up from a fall, believing she is still the most beautiful and capable woman on the planet. Uh, with this newfound confidence, she's empowered to live her life fearlessly and flawlessly. But what will happen when she realizes her appearance never changed? So it's a, she's not ugly, uh, but girl who gets confidence, I guess, and loves her life as if she's the most beautiful woman. And then later on changes, I guess. Um, it's, it has the potential to be funny because it takes on a lot of stereotypes and, um, Hopefully tries to turn them on their head and make things entertaining. Amy Schumer is generally very humorous to me when she can be herself. Uh, so I'm looking forward to watching this particular one. And I hope it is actually going to be entertaining. So there's that one. Um, next one is the Venom teaser. This one came out during the Super Bowl. They just finished filming um, primary film, uh, filming production on this particular film. Like they finished all the, all the, all the regular shots. Now they have to edit it, cut it in with some CGI. Um, so I was surprised to see this trailer come out for the Super Bowl. Um, it's probably one of the first things they've, they've edited together with the filming they've done. And it is what it is. Um, one of the things missing from the Venom trailer, though, Venom. Yeah, the, the guy in the title. Um, this, this trailer is more long lines of the Eddie Brock movie, which is not necessarily bad, but it is not what people were expecting. And the Internet, of course, did um, kind of cry out, cry foul on this particular issue. Um but it, like I said, it's a teaser trailer. It gives you some indication that an alien crash um, spacecraft landed or something, and Eddie Brock is is changed to become of it, and he's also hunted down because of these abilities. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'm 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 tentatively uh, excited about the po possibility of a very dark film here um, with 
the alien symbiont, Venom, who is a very much a bad guy, you know, murders people at first. Um, so I'll look forward to Eddie Brock. Um, is is looks good. So I'm like that at least is is hopeful. Uh, so there we go. Also out is uh, Deadpool two. Is this is this is a trailer again? Meet Cable. We get your first in depth look at who Cable is, but also with the same great Deadpool humor. Um, entertaining as all hack guys. That's, that's all I can say about it. Uh, go watch that particular trailer. Nothing more that I can say. It's just humor, Deadpool style, rated R stuff. So there you go. Uh, also, Solo, a Star Wars official teaser. This is the first trailer we got for Solo, um, the Star Wars movie. Uh, and very Star Warsy. I mean, if you've seen the movies in the last few years, you kind of know what to expect. Like beautiful, expansive scenery, uh, main characters doing things that are exciting, people looking for Easter eggs galore, and all that is happening with this particular trailer as well. You get to see the Millennium Falcon for a brand breaking new. You get to see all the different characters, um, Lana Kurzweilian, other guys, Han Solo, Chewie, Peoples, uh, and people are only guessing at okay where this is going to be going. You know, so but people are look are just scanning each frame and looking for particular Easter eggs. Um, it is kind of weird to see that lady from Game of Thrones popping though. So there's that. Um, so there you go. Uh, it is the trailer. Okay, and last but not least, Life of the Party. This is another comedy. Uh, this one, however, is going to play after an ad, unfortunately, because I didn't I didn't cue it up correctly. Um, it is from. Uh, Melissa McCarthy. It also stars Jillian Jacob, Debbie Ryan. Um, when her husband suddenly dumps her, long-time dedicated housewife Deanna turns regret into reset by going back to college, landing in the same class as, as her daughter, who's not entirely sold an idea, plunging headlong into the campus experience of the increasingly outspoken Deanna, or embraces freedom, fun, and frat boys on her own terms. So this is um, going back to school as a divorced mom. It, it's very Melissa McCarthy kind of uh, humor, uh, which she has become uh, increasingly well known for and famous for. So uh, good for her. Uh, it seems super, well, seems entertaining at least. Um, so there you go. I'll, I'll skip through it because I'm almost done with the trailers. So there you go. Uh, so entertaining. Go watch that, of course. Uh, we'll have the link in the show notes for you to go check it out yourself. So between IFO Pretty, Venom, Deadpool 2, Solo, uh, and Life of the Party, definitely go with Deadpool. Uh, Deadpool is the big winner for me this week, at least, because it's Deadpool. It's entertaining, but they're also superheroes, so there's action and superpowers galore. Um, I do. I am interested in watching all these movies. Uh, they wouldn't be here otherwise. Um, but I think a good second place, Solo. Uh, after that, I Feel Pretty, Lies for the Party. And last but not least, well, at least in this case, Venom. Uh, that trailer did not impress me. Um, but again, I'll be watching all these anyway. So, um, But definitely winner for this week is going to be Deadpool 2 trailer um, introducing Cable, which is just kind of cool and funny and irreverent, which is very much in that style. So that's it for the show, ladies and gentlemen. Th- if you like the podcast and want to help us support us, uh, this podcast or the Little Bitty Podcast, the other one, you can find all the ways to do so at geekbypodcast.com forward slash support. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for, you know, checking us out and <laughs> listen to me go geek out about some stuff. Uh, for Geek Bites Podcast, I'm Ramon Mejia and Edgar Okoso should be back next week. Uh, now remember to go geek out about something. See you later, everybody.